Hello everyone, welcome to Ansible Automation Series. In today's lesson, we are going to learn how to set up Ansible from scratch in AWS. My name is Robin Gotham. I'm AWS certified cloud and DevOps engineer. Follow along with me till the end of the video so that we'll learn how to set up Ansible in AWS from scratch. So what is Ansible? Ansible is a configuration management tool that helps in quick provisioning of the servers as well as quick recovery from the critical events. So let us discuss the most used cases of Ansible. So let's say for example you need to install some packages in multiple hosts. Once you have configuration management in place, you can easily provision that configuration changes to all of your hosts. Those hosts are managed as part of the groups in an inventory file and we'll discuss that further in this series. So here we have our control node which is the node where our Ansible is installed. And you can see we have managed nodes, which is also referred as hosts that doesn't require Ansible to be installed. They are servers you can manage using Ansible. Another use case is to have Ansible installed on every node so that each node acts as a control node that provisions the new configuration on that particular instance. We can see such configuration as a part of user data in EC2 or launch configuration. Ansible is clear and understandable because Ansible uses simple syntax and is easy for everyone to understand. Ansible is fast to learn. It is fast to learn and easy to set up because you don't need to install extra agents or daemon on your servers. Ansible provides large number of modules and uses YAML syntax for expressing Ansible playbooks. Ansible establishes the secured connection via SSH. Besides that, I would say Ansible's greatest strength is its relevant and well-written documentation with timely updates. What are the most popular tools for configuration management? And we are going to have a quick comparison among those. So the major difference between Ansible and other configuration management tools like Safe and Puppet are that Ansible don't require agent. Connection takes place via SSH. But for Safe and Puppet, they require agent on each client machines. Ansible works with shell commands and you can use shell scripts and work on converting them in playbooks. But for other configuration management tools like Chef and Puppet, they require at least slight understanding of Ruby or a custom language to get it started. So let us discuss about the inventory file. So Ansible basically has two kinds of inventory, static inventory and dynamic inventory. So what is a static inventory? Static inventory is a text file that contains the list of host names. The default lives in EDC Ansible hosts. You can also define a new default in ansible.cfz file or you can provide a tag with minus i flag for defining the path of inventory. But dynamic inventory is essentially a script that will build the inventory on the fly. Instead of lines of hostname, we'll be specifying a script which can be Bash or Python. 
For AWS, if you are using modules for auto scaling as instances are going to spin up and down, since you will not know how many hosts are there, dynamic inventory is a solution in dealing with that. When you go through this link, which I'll be providing in my description below, you can see I have attached these two links as well. The top link is for the Ansible documentation where you can find all the information which is well written in this page and you can see you also have dynamic inventory documentation over here. So let's go to our AWS management console and once we are in the EC2 dashboard we can launch instance. Let me select two instances. On security group, let's create a security group with port 20 to open. Here I have created Ansible civil security group which has port 20 to open. So for one instance, I'm going to name it control node and for the other, I'm going to name it hosts or just host. So the host is controlled by control node and we only need to have Ansible installed in our control node. So let's get inside our control node to have our Ansible installation. So let me SSS into that control node. So once you are in that control node, let us follow our GitHub documentation for installation. So when you go over installing ansible.md, you can see the installation steps So what we are going to do is we are basically going to install on Amazon Linux 2. So we are going to follow this top step, install Ansible for Linux. So I have copied and pasted over there. So what we can do is Ansible dash dash version to verify if our Ansible is installed correctly and if you see something like this Ansible 2.9.5 it's installed successfully. Note that in order to have communication between control node and the managed nodes or hosts we need to have key sharing between these instances. So let's go ahead and share the key from our control node to the host. Let me generate a key using SSH keygen minus TRSA and let me press enter a couple of times and here let me cat my public key. So once I have this public key I'm going to copy this public key so let me SSH into my host. Now on my host I don't need to have Ansible to be installed but I need to have communication from control node to the host. So for that I have copied the public key from my control node and I'm going to have that public key over authorized keys in my host.
So once I have copied the public key to the authorized keys on my host, these two machines can communicate to each other. So on my control node, let me go over to etc ansible directory and inside here you can see we have ansible.cfz file. So when you go to ansible.cfz file, you can see we have inventory path over here, which is commented. Now we want this to be uncommented. because we are specifying our host on that hosts file and note that since we are maintaining the static inventory here we are making our changes on the host file so let me also uncomment this thing sudo user to be root so after I am done with that you can see I have the hosts file over here so on the host file you can see we have the nice grouping and under this group we have the server name or the IP addresses so the way our host file works is we can have a group and inside a group we can ha have a server name or the DNS name like we have over here so let me move this host file to hosts.original and make changes in new host file for that let me do sudo mv hosts to hosts.original so once I have renamed the host to hosts.original I'm going to name another file with hosts sudo vim hosts so here I'm going to specify a group and I'm going to specify my servers over here but if we want to perform something locally we can also do that just by specifying the local host so over here let me specify the group as localhost and here let me specify localhost and ansible connection equals to local so after I am done with that let me save this file and over here I can see if the ansible ping works so let me ping into my local host and see its response you can see it's successful let's suppose we want to see the free memory in our machine you can see our memory details over here so know that on our hosts file you can see we had specified the local host but what if I want to make changes in my host node so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to specify this is my host I'm going to specify the group as host and over this section I'm going to specify the private IP of my host so let me copy this and paste it over here so let me use ansible all minus m ping command again you can see ping pong over here this means we have connection from our control node to the host so let's say we want to similarly see the free memory 
Now, this free memory is the free memory of the host. So this was one of the common example of using ad hoc command in Ansible. In the next tutorial, we'll be discussing further about using the playbooks in Ansible. See you in next video. Thank you.